Uh, I was facing 30 years to life, and I was going to be 51 years old when I got out of prison. I was selling drugs full-time and going to college full-time. In October the 12th, 1993, they had a drug bust over 28 pounds of pure cocaine. It was valued at over a million dollars. Um, no one had ever got caught with that much cocaine in Nashville. Some of my associates actually got busted with the drugs, and they were charging me with conspiracy to distribute cocaine. So I left town to evade arrest, and after about a month of running from the police, I finally turned myself in. My bond was $250,000. My sister's bond was $250,000 also. Although she was not dealing any drugs, she was guilty by association. And I was in the county jail for six months. And then the FBI came and took the case from Metro Police. And they told me I was facing 30 years to life. And they lowered my bond, so I was actually able to get out. But they put an electronic monitor on my ankle. And I stayed out for about a year um, doing the case. And then finally I went back to court with a public defender. Uh, while I was locked up the first six months, um, I started back reading my Bible. Because I had been in church all my life because my father was a minister. I just stopped believing in God. If he freed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace or Daniel out of the lion's den, I was thinking, well, maybe God will work for me. He can, you know, perform a miracle for me. On my sentencing, I told the judge that I was sorry for what I had done. And I took full responsibility for everything that had happened. And I had no one to blame but myself. And I asked him to give me a second chance at life. And I told him I had been praying to God that God would speak to his heart to give me a second chance because my life was in his hands. I ended up getting 30 months. And not only that, they gave me a six month boot camp where they select 200 people a year out of over 100,000. After I, I went to boot camp, I was released November 15th, 1995. When I got out, I was living at the federal halfway house. And I enrolled back in college and I started working in the campus salon because I had a barber license. People started coming, getting eyebrow arches and haircuts and our business grew from that and it was $10 a head and I saved that money. After a year I graduated and then I had about forty something thousand dollars saved from sacrificing and living below my means. Everybody was buying pages and beepers back then, it was real popular so I opened up a small pager company and after that I started back uh, cutting hair also and then I purchased a barber shop and worked there for a while but then I had a dream always to um, open my own school where I could give back to the community and help people. Now I'm still giving back to the community and helping people. Uh, my school is my ministry. We graduate over 600 people and basically we minister to people. We help them find jobs. We give them a trade that will last them a lifetime. They asked me three things that I could tell the world, and it was number one, put God first, number two, listen to your parents, and number three, never give up. From a one lady to a multimillionaire because somebody cared to tell you to maximize the moment that you can be anybody, that you are not what people say you are, that you can do all things through Christ. May I pray for you that your finances would increase, that God would open up doors, that he would strengthen you spiritually and economically, and that you would become a sign to what God can do with what this nation is throwing away. I pray in the name of Jesus that God would open up the windows of heaven as you serve him and pour you out supernatural blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. Our young men are selling drugs. They're going into corrupt business, but they could be businessmen in the kingdom, and you're just a sign of what the Holy Ghost can do when somebody stretches out on the word of God. Somebody praise God for him right now. Praise God for him.